All right then, so now we're keeping track of the current guess and we allow the user to submit a new guess word when they hit enter. And when they do that, we fire this format guess function right here. Now it's the job of this function to take the current guess, which is a string, and check each letter individually against the solution word, and then apply a color to each letter accordingly. Remember, the colors are green, yellow, and gray. Green means the letter in the guess is in the solution and it's in the correct place. Yellow means the letter in the guess is in the solution but it's in the wrong place and grey means that the letter from the guess is not in the solution at all. So this function needs to check two things for each letter in the guess. One, is the letter in the correct position in the solution? If it is, then we need to assign a color of green to that letter. And two, is the letter in the solution in a different place? If it is, then we need to assign a color of yellow to that letter. If none of those cases are true, then we just assign the letter a color of gray. And then by the end of this function, we should have a formatted guess, which looks something like this comment right here, an array where each letter in the guess is represented by an object. And each object has a key property, which is the letter itself and a color property. And then this formatted guess is gonna get added to the guesses state up at the top of the hook. So then let's start fleshing out this function. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a variable called solution array. And I'm gonna set that equal to an array whereby we take the solution string and we spread it using the spread syntax. Remember, we take the solution into the hook as an argument and it's a string to begin with. So we're essentially just turning that string into an array of individual letters. And this way it's easier to work with as you'll see in a minute. The next thing I'm going to do is create a variable called formatted guess. And it's this value which is ultimately going to get returned from this function. And we're just setting it up right here to begin with. So for now, I'll set this equal to an array. And inside that array, I'm going to spread the current guess state, which is currently a string. So I'm doing the same thing here as what I did to the solution string above and taking the string value and spreading it into an array of letters. But I'm gonna go one step further because I want each letter to be an object where we can have a key property, which would be the letter itself and also a color property. So I'm gonna use the map method on this array to map this array into a new array. So this map method fires a function for each letter in the array and we get access to that letter on each iteration, right? So I'm gonna call that L. So we take that into the function and this represents the letter that we're currently iterating, yeah? And then we just return an updated value for what we want this item to be in the new mapped array. So I wanna return an object with a key property and that value is gonna be L, which is the letter itself. So A, B, C, D, etc. And also I want a color property. Now we don't know what the color of each letter is gonna be yet because we haven't checked each one. But what we're gonna do is default this to be gray. And then when we check each letter later on, if we need to update this color to yellow or green, we can do, but by default it's gray. So now this is the formatted guess, right, so far. It's gonna be an array of objects where each object represents a letter in the user's guess word. And each object now has a key property and a color property. So now we need to cycle through this formatted guess and actually check each letter inside it to see if any of them match letters that are in the solution array that we created right here. And then change the value of the color property if they are. So to begin with, we're gonna look for any letters that need to be colored green. That is any letters that are in exactly the right position. So what I'll do is a little comment first of all to say, find any green letters, right? And then I wanna take the formatted guess and use the for each method on it. And this allows us to cycle through the formatted guess array and perform a function for each object inside that array. And this function is gonna accept two arguments, the object itself that we're currently iterating and the index of that object in the array. So what I would do in this function is check, does the letter or the key in this position of the formatted guess array match the letter in the same position in the solution array? So I can say if, and then in parentheses, solution array, and then we need square brackets, 
to say position i, which is the index, is triple equal to L, which is the letter object, right? Dot key, which is the key they press because we stored that in the key property. If that's the case, then I want to color this particular letter green, so to speak. So then what we do is we take the formatted guess at position I, the current position, and we get the color property on that. And all we need to do is set it equal to green. Now, we also need to do one more thing, and that is to set that particular letter in the solution, in the array, to be null, right? And that's because it's already been matched now against a letter in our guess word. And in the future, when we're coloring things yellow, we don't want to double match something. So in essence, we just cross it out, okay? All right, so that's now applying the color to be green for any exact letter matches in our formatted guess array. Next up, we need to do something similar for the yellow colored letters. So again, we need to cycle through the formatted array to see if we have any yellow matches this time. So any letters that are in the solution, but in the wrong place. And to do that again, we're gonna take the formatted array and we're gonna use the for each method on it. And we fire a function for each item in the formatted array where we get access to the letter object and also the index, all right? Okay, so inside this function, we wanna do another if check to say if the solution array and then use a method on that this time called includes. And then in parentheses, we pass in l.key, which is the key property on the letter object. So that could be a, b, c, whatever the key is inside this word, right? And this is gonna check if it's included anywhere inside the solution array. So not just in the correct position, but anywhere in the array, because that's what yellow means, right? So if this is true, then we wanna color that particular letter yellow. And remember, when we had a match in the previous block where we looked for exact matches, we turned that letter in the solution array to be null after it was matched. And that means that we can't use that letter again to match against something else in this check. So if it's already been colored green, we then can't color it yellow again because we turned that particular element in the array, the solution array, to null. Okay, does that make sense? So we're not kind of double matching things. Anyway. We also need one more stipulation inside this if check. So let's do a double ampersand. And the condition is l.color is not equal to green. So that means if we've already colored this letter green in the previous checks, then we don't want to color it again in this one because that would overwrite what we've previously done. For example, imagine our solution word was piped and our guess was I don't know, plans. Now, in the first round of checking, the first P would be colored green, and that would be the only match, right? So we take out that first P in the solution array because we don't want to double match against it, so it becomes null. But then in the second round of matching down here, we're still iterating our guess, which is plans. And when we check the P against the solution array, we can see that there's a P in it, elsewhere still. So this would technically be a match and we color this letter yellow, but we don't want to do that because it's already been colored green. And if we colored it yellow, we'd be overwriting that green value. So that's why we need to make sure before we color anything yellow that it's not already been colored green. Anyway, inside this if block, we can then do the same as above where we take the formatted guess at position I and then assign it a particular color. This time though, it's gonna be yellow. And again, we need to take whatever element we matched against in the solution array and turn that to be null so that we can't double match against it. But this time, we can't just use the index to do that like we did before because yellow matches are not dependent on the index or the position in the array. And the letter in the solution array could be at any position or index. So instead, we can say solution array the square brackets and inside the square brackets we say solution array dot index of and then pass in l dot key and this is going to find the index of this particular letter in the solution array and grab that letter for us and then we can just set it to be null all right all right so then finally at the end we just need to return the formatted guess which is now going to be an array of letter objects where the color of each one is either going to be green yellow or gray. 
So now we're returning it right here. When we call this function, this function is going to return that formatted guess array. So we can capture that down here where we call the function. We call it here, it's returning the array. So let's store it in some kind of variable. So I'll say const, um, we'll just call it formatted, but you can call it whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. And then what I'm going to do is log that to the console. So console.log formatted like so. So now when we submit a word, it's going to do all these checks. If it's valid and we submit it, it calls this formatted guess. It formats it, checks all the letters against the solution. And then it's going to log that formatted guess to the console. So let's give this a whirl. All right then, so if I start to type in some kind of word here and press enter, now we can see we've submitted it, it passes the test, we format the array and we log it to the console. So each one of these represents a letter in this word, right? And if we open this up, we can see a key value, which spell out brave like this, so that's word, and then a color for each one. So we get a full match right here. So B is in the correct position and then none of the rest match at all. So we know it begins with B. So I could do another guess. Let me just delete that and try something else. I'll say boils, something like that. And then we get a different formatted one. All right. So now the first one is still green. That's in the correct position. The second one is gray. So O is not in it. Then this is I. So that's in the correct. Sorry, this is green. So this is in the correct position. This I. We get yellow for L. So it's in the word, but not in the correct position. And gray for S. So I think I know what this is because. I wrote the solution words. I think it's bling. So let me do this. They should all be green now. And we can see, yep, they're all green. Awesome. So now we have this kind of checking in place where we're checking each guess and we're colorizing the letters. And that's going to really help us later when we're outputting these guesses in the grid, because then we know what color each square in a particular guess should be. Now, I'm just very quickly going to do one more thing. I'm going to head to the Wordle components and above where we're outputting the guess, I'm actually for now going to also output the solution. So as we're developing the game, we can easily see what the solution word is and it just makes it easier when we're performing checks. So I'm going to say solution dash and then output the solution right here. And we can do that because we get access to it as a prop. Now we're getting errors down here and that's because we have two root elements. So let's surround this in a div as well. Make sure you are just starting angle bracket and then close it off down here. Scoot these in like so. And then that should be pretty much it. Let's try this out in the browser. All right, so now we can see at the top, the solution is cause. But if I try something like craps, <laughs> press enter, we know this is incorrect, but some of these things match. So we should get green for the first one, C, because they match, C and C, right? The second one is yellow, R, because although it's not in the correct position here, it's still in the solution word, so that's right. A and P are both gray, which is correct because there's no A and P in the solution. And then the final one over here, S, is green because that's in the right place. Let me just check this out. If I type in the correct word, they should all be green. Let's open this up and they are. So all of this checking is now in place. Everything is working. So next up, we want to take this formatted guess and we want to add it to our guesses states, the history of guesses, if you like.